How Children Get Digital Empowerment by Playing. I like to play. I like to be silly doing useless things. It's great to immerse yourself, forget the time and just play. Just be present in something exciting and forget about time and place. When I was a kid, I played every day. I played games inside and outside. We played ball and was running around doing nothing and everything. We played with dolls and train tracks. And sometimes we were astronauts. But I forgot to play. I grew up. Then luckily I had kids and then I could play again. Then they grew up and I did not play anymore. But then I became part of the coding pirates and now I'm playing again. I'm an adult now, math teacher, and crazy about technology in school. I teach math as a math teacher and technology comprehension. <clears throat> technology comprehension is teaching children about the good life in a digital age, to give them digital skills, to be children in a time where technology is taking up more and more space in our everyday lives, to have an amazing childhood to live the good, safe life with technology. But what is play? Play is activities without purpose. It's a way to practice life. In school, we can play, but it's often with a pro professional purpose. We always need to do something. We always have tests, trials, and exams in front of us. Everyone wants to do well, but we are not teaching the children to be participants in a future society, but in a society that no longer exists. We can use the play to change the school. We can provide space to play, not only during recess, but also during classes. We can do experiments, studies, and solve open tasks and tasks from the reality. Playing are experiments. It's driven by curiosity. It's often sensual. It's out in the world. It makes use of materials in time and space. Requires concepts and knowledge. Remember the experiment, said one of my wise friends, Stina Ising Doon from the University of Olbo. She had made soap bubbles in frosty weather. I play at home. It is to dance during a break at a team's meeting, to knit a hat without a pattern, to do experiments in the kitchen, to make your own soap, to do something, something crazy just because you can do it and then hope it goes well, but laugh when it goes wrong. I knitted a Santa hat for my grandson, Walter. He's so small. It grew so big that he can grow it in it for the next 10 or 20 years. Every day I see children playing with technology. I see them producing movies, playing games, make animation, coding apps. They have replaced the draft booklet with the technological possibilities, but we still give them notebooks and copy sheets in school, books and homework. The technology is natural for the kids because they are curious about it. They are digital brave, they are creative, they have imagination. They love to hear good stories about technology and stupid ways to use it. I bought a green screen for my school and the children said, wow, you have a green screen and they saw the opportunities. The adults said, what is it? It takes up too much space. Then the children had to make movies with a green screen about online surf safety. They played with the possibilities. They were creative. They failed. They tried in a new way. They had different roles. Some were photographers, actors, assistants, sound people, etc. They were in flow and community. They became wise about online security. They learned new words and concepts about online safety while playing. The children have transferred the playing to the technology. They are now practicing becoming digital competent children and later adults during playing. Do children leave school with the right and modern competences? 
This school does not always equip the children for the future. This school must keep up with the times and the reflect the surrounding community. This school must ensure equal opportunities for all children. So we must look at the academic content in school. What skills do the children need to have? I believe that children must be good at getting ideas, being creative and innovative. They must be good at making digital productions, work together. They must be able to communicate their results and knowledge. They must be good at seeking out knowledge. They must understand technology, green transition, climate consumption, nutrition, and physical and mental health, education, and relationship in relation to their own lives. It's important for our democracy that the schools keep up with the times and the student becomes competent citizens in our society. I think the schools need a proper cleaning and updating to contemporary standards. School haven't changed, society have changed. What would you have liked to learn in school? What is digital empowerment for children? Digital empowerment is when children understand digital artifacts, opportunities, intentions, and consequences. They know what you find in the machine room behind the technology. They know the consequences of cookies and understand why Alexa is not just a good friend. We pay with our data for the free services because nothing is free online. They can work with digital productions and even make their own inventions. They can imagine what they can use the technology for when they develop with it themselves. And it's important knowledge for children and young people who have grown up with direct access to the internet, sometimes without filters. I volunteer at Coding Pirate, and here I see children learn to code by being curious and by playing. They are playing and learning. They have great digital courage. They learn faster and faster and have imaginations and ideas. They get a language so they can talk to others about technology and engineering. i just tell you a good story. We just got a new department of coding parts in New Greenland. We held online meeting with the volunteers in New and in Copenhagen and then workshops on Saturdays with children in Denmark and Greenland. The children of the two countries work on the same tasks and program, and we created creative and fun fantasy worlds in co-spaces. The teacher or instructor was in Denmark. The, the children were happy and curious about each other. We saw the snow in Greenland, and they saw the rain in Denmark. The kids showed each other their digital productions, and we clapped together because we learned together because we have the internet. We need to be healthy in body and mind, have a life and balance. We must learn to set the boundaries for technology so it, that it does not take over our lives, but make our lives better. If we use the technology smartly, we can have more time to be together, play, be family. If we do not use the technology smartly, it takes over our lives and we only know each other through a screen. We, we become addicted to technology and it limits our lives and steals our time. We need to teach the children to use computers and mobile phones in school for life. For many children, it's just entertainment and a pastime, but it can easily be used for play, math, communication, production, knowledge sharing, learning, and much more in common with peers. The schools focuses on exam, grades, and tests. But the children need skills, knowledge, motivation, and curiosity. And they can learn this through technology, play, and community. We need the students to be competent and able to act, to develop and work with experiments, think independently, be critical, be innovative. We need the girls to take a technological education as well. We need the girls to be able to create the technology, have knowledge of technology, and help shape our common digital future. 
all children and young people have the right to be taught technology comprehension. It's a perfect way to show a student what you can do with technology. And for some, it may be the start of the dream education. Most important is to have a good life in a digital age. It's the most important thing. I have a class with students aged 15, 16 in technology comprehension. And I see students who have learned to code. They have learned it because they are interested and because they have discovered how smart it is to have digital skills for life, for education, for the future. They did not learn it in school, they learned it on the internet. I dream about a life and a school for all children, where they will be prepared for the future, where they will become competent and ready, a good life, where all their dreams can be fulfilled and where there's a place in society for all of them. We must take care of our democracy and our lives. I often find that they do not talk to other adults about their digital life. The, pa the parents ask the children how it went to school today, but they must also ask, how was your digital life today? It's not good for children to be alone on the internet. The adults must be part of the children's digital life. The school should not be exam, test, grades, but learning, well-being, play and necessary and present and future skills. The school needs a major cleaning so that a solid platform can be found for technology comprehension. Practice and culture need to change in school. The children are brave, they are researching and experimenting with the technology. They are curious and full of great ideas. They have an open mindset towards technology. But it is the adults who decide. And the adults have forgotten to play. The adults use technology in an adult way. But perhaps the children's way of using the technology is much smarter and creates much more learning. They try and fail and try again. Have you ever been challenged by technology? My best advice is to think and learn like a curious child. Children are still playing, but they are also playing with the technology. Computers, robots, programming, drones, coding, virtual reality. And we all must play more in schools. Thank you.